This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Good morning everyone, you know I woke up this morning, I was experiencing like a time warp. I'm coming back to Yeshiva Tzgar Yisrael, actually you might not know, but I grew up right here, a few blocks away from the Yeshiva, and uh, I had my Bar Mitzvah in this uh, Yeshiva. Actually, for those of you who grew up in Flatbush, my Bar Mitzvah was scheduled for the Shabbos right after Tisha B'Av. My Bar Mitzvah was something like um, 10 years ago, let's say, and... I'm headed to shul, literally the Shabbos before my Bar Mitzvah. It was Tisha B'av. It was Shabbos Shechaliyos to Tisha B'av. We daven in the Aguda. And I'm walking with my father to shul. And I ask my father, you know, Daddy, where's the shul? And the shul burnt down on Tisha B'av uh, a couple of years ago. And I didn't know where my Bar Mitzvah was going to be. So actually Rabbi Jacobson was uh, kind enough. He opened up Yeshiva Tzvaris Yisrael. And that's in a way, how I ended up coming to Yeshiva Tzvaris Yisrael. Everybody remembers that? I remember that, sure. Yeah, Rabbi Jacobs was at my Bar Mitzvah. I remember the fire. I remember who did the fire, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> and uh, the rest was history. So it's really, I woke up this morning, I'm thinking I'm back in high school. I'm coming to the Yeshiva. I remember my route. I went from Avenue M and East 31st up Avenue L. And then Avenue L till East 35th Street. Sometimes I would meet my Rebbe Rebbe Neza walking to Yeshiva on the way to Yeshiva. So it's really uh, very special to be here this morning. And you know, at the time that I was in Tzvaris Yisrael, it doesn't look like it does today. It was in stage one of the building. So maybe there were four classes in the Yeshiva. It was about a quarter of the size the Yeshiva is now. And I remember Rabbi Turk taking me into his office. And he showed me stage two, and stage three, and stage four, and stage five. And I remember thinking, you know, yeah, it's a dream, it's a dream. But here I am today, and we see the dream became a reality. And really, the Siat HaDashmaya of Yeshiva Tzvaras Yisrael is uh, reflective of the Yom of Hanukkah. I want to share with you a very simple thought. I think for a young man in high school, in the Sifta, very often we think, you know, we look at the Gemara, we look at what our responsibility is, we look at what we have to do in life, and sometimes we feel very overwhelmed. We feel, I'm never going to be successful, it's too hard for me, I can't do this, it's too much to lift. You know, I was thinking about this, very often in life we feel overwhelmed. And really feeling overwhelmed, in a sense, is gaiva. It's arrogant to feel overwhelmed because we're not doing it. We're not the ones who have to do it. I want to share with you a very simple question. You know, when we talk about the Yom Tov of Hanukkah, we all know there are two miracles that happen on Hanukkah. You know, it's very hard to know. So which miracle are we celebrating? We talk about the oil. The Gemara talks about the oil. They came in. They found one flask of oil. There was enough to last for one night. It lasted for eight nights. That's all the Gemara talks about. You look in the Al-Anisim, and the Al-Anisim talks about a different miracle. The Al-Anisim talks about the military victory. Rabbim biyad ma'atim, tmeim biyad tahoyrim. A few, a group, I, I want to, does anybody know, a little trivia question. Yeah? How many Chashmonaim fought in the war? Very good. What's your name? Barry? Mayor Rosenthal. So Mayor says... 13, that's right. Rashi says in Zoy Sabracha, there were 13, there were 13 soldiers among the Chashmaram, Rabbim Biyad Ma'atim. So there's a question, you know, which, which was it? What was the miracle? Was it the miracle of the oil? Or was it the military victory? You know, we focus, it's hard to know which miracle we're really celebrating. And all the Svarim, they say really it was one miracle and the other one we needed for a different reason or it was the other miracle. Is there any way to understand how somehow both of these Nisim come together? Because it's very unusual by every Yom Tif, we celebrate one mess. On Sukkot, we celebrate Anani Akavai. 
On Pesach, we celebrate Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And comes the Yom Tov of Hanukkah, we have two totally different miracles. How exactly do we understand this? I want to share with you a simple comment of the Bach. Reading this Bach is literally the key to understanding Hanukkah. You know, the Bach discusses an Indian that we're probably all familiar with. We know that there's a fundamental difference between Hanukkah and Purim. Hanukkah we celebrate L'hoidu Sulahalel, and Purim we celebrate with Mishnah Simcha. Hanukkah we celebrate spiritually, and Purim we celebrate physically. And we all know the famous Lavush, that the reason why Hanukkah we celebrate spiritually is because they try to take away Tyro Mitzvah. And the reason why Purim we celebrate physically is because they, they wanted to kill us. But let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. Why do you think on Hanukkah they, Hashem allowed them to take away Torah mitzvahs and on Purim the Rebbe Hashem allowed them to make a gzera to kill us? Why do you think the Rebbe Hashem allowed different gzeras at these two different times in our history? So the Bach says something very interesting. We don't quite know what the Makar of the Bach is. The Bach doesn't say what the source of this is. But the Bach says in order to understand why a gzera happens, you have to look at the root of the matter. What did Klal Yisrael do to deserve that gzera? Says the Bach in the times of Purim, what was the Aveira of the times of Purim? The Bach says, they were Nana from the Suda Bach so therefore, because the chet was a physical chet, the Rebbe Hashem allowed a decree of, of physical annihilation. But says the Bach, what was the Avera that Klal Yisrael did in the times of Hanukkah? It's interesting. We don't find anywhere. We don't find in any Midrashah. We don't find in Shas. What Avera did Klal Yisrael do in the times of Hanukkah? Says the Bach, they were Nisrashel Ba'avoidah. You know what it means? They were in the Srash of the They did the Avoidah in the base of Mikdash. They brought Karbanites. But they did it perhaps without enthusiasm, without energy, without focus. They were in the Srash Maybe they came a little late. Maybe they did it without the proper emotion. They were in the Srash of the Listen to the Bach. And we learned a very important story from him. We learn from here their patterns in life. You know what that means, their patterns in life? It says the Bach, when Kalal Yisrael's Nisrashel Ba'avoida, when we're weak in Avoida, Hashem says, you don't want to do it? No problem. I'll take it away. And the Divanim came and they closed up shop. They said, was closed. No Karbanos. No Havlakas Hamanoir at all. Their patterns in life. You know, if you see Chas Vashalan, that there are gezeros and klal yisrael, and opportunities are taken away. Sometimes we have to examine, well, maybe there's something we're doing that we're not taking advantage of the opportunity properly. So the Shalom says, you don't want to take advantage of the opportunity. I won't give you the opportunity. Comes the Bach. So how did klal yisrael do tshuva in the times of Hanukkah? They were nischazeg ba'avoida. They were moister nefesh for the avoida. They risked their lives to restore the Avaida. So you have 13 Chashmaran. They went back into the Beis Hamikdash and they risked their lives to restore the Avaida in the Beis Hamikdash. So says the Rebbe Hashem, Oh, you want the Avaida? You're being Mechazik in the Avaida. I'm going to give you Siyata de Shmaya. Now I'm going to give you Siyata de Shmaya Lamalam in Hateba. You only found one flask of oil. Really, that oil should last for one night. I'm going to make a miracle that the oil is going to last for eight nights because there are patterns in this world. Once you put your best foot forward, once you give it your all, once you're mechazik yourself, the Rav Hashem says, I'll take you the rest of the way there. You know, the Chafetz Chaim, it's reputed that when the elevator came out, Chafetz Chaim was very excited, very happy about the elevator. Rabbi Chaim said the elevator is a mashal to avoid the Hashem. All you have to do is press the button, put one foot in, put the other foot in, and the Rebbe Hashem carries you the rest of the way up. You're not doing it. Of course, you look at the, the skyscraper, 
In my times, actually, I was in Yeshiva Tvaris Yisrael the morning of 9-11. I was in the, I don't know, in the coat room. I went outside. There were newspaper clippings floating in the air, landing on the floor. I was here. But in the uh, Twin Towers, Aleya Mashalim, if you looked up at the Twin Towers, you'd say it's impossible to climb. It is impossible to climb. But you don't have to do it. You just have to wait online in the elevator, walk into the elevator, press the button, and get along for the ride. Says the Bach, that is Ruchnias, that is Avodah Hashem. The Yvon Shalom doesn't ask you to go all the way. The Yvon Shalom asks you to access something called Siyata Deshnaya. You put your best foot forward, you're machazik yourself. It's okay you only found one flask of oil. It's okay you only tried your best, because that's good enough. And then the Rebbein Shalom carries you the rest of the way there. That's the fundamental lesson of Hanukkah. So it comes out, there aren't two miracles. There's one ness. The ness was that when Klal Yisrael were mechazek, when they strengthened themselves, when they were moister nefesh, to regain the Avoida by fighting the Mohamma, the Rebbein Shalom restored the Avoida and the Beis HaMikdash l'malam anataba. You know, there's a medrash, I don't know if we can say this over in a high school. You know, this is like a uh, a little bit uh, edgy. It's okay? Okay, we got official approval. But uh, there's very interesting matters in Parshish Nasai. It talks about an alcoholic. You know it already? No. You know it. Okay. So, in a nutshell, the guy couldn't shake it. In a nutshell, the guy couldn't shake it. The family had enough with this guy. He was depleting all of the, all of the accounts. So they took the guy. They got him uh, inebriated. They brought him out to a cemetery. They put him six feet under, and they buried him. It's a matter of parts of Nasa. The guy's sleeping. He's in a stupor. And all of a sudden, an army is coming by. And the army here is that, that there's another invading army in the other direction. And of course, soldiers, what do they take with them in battle? They brought with them the whole bar with them. And the soldiers didn't know what to do. They fled, they ran, and they left the entire bar right by this guy's kebab. It's a medrash. The medrash says he woke up. He says, I can't believe it, Gan Eden is much better than I thought. <laughs> and he sees he's provided with days and days and days worth of alcohol. The family comes back. They expected to see him dead. They expected to see him depressed, and he's sitting there in the best condition of his life. They said, what happened? He tells them the story. He was lying here, an army came and deposited all the alcohol there. Ad Khan Divrei HaMedrash, that's the end of the story. So the Mishnah Melio says, what in the world is the Medrash telling us? What kind of Medrash is this? What do we learn from this Medrash? It says, we learn from this Medrash a very important lesson. That what you really want in life the Yvon Shem helps you make it happen. This guy really wanted what he wanted. So the Yvon Shem gave him siyata deshmaya lemala menachem. And this is the limon of Hanukkah. If you're mechazek yourself, you put your best foot forward, you strengthen yourselves, the Yvon Shem will help you lemala lemala. And I ask you a very interesting question. You know, in yeshiva they used to joke, in, you know, in the RSA, that the only time you're allowed to say something which isn't mukhruch is by the Hanukkah party. So they used to joke with me. Because, you know, I used to learn other things sometimes, so they, they would joke when they said, oh, the last thing, they might invite you to speak at the Hanukkah party in RSA. But I, I would assume that we could, we could say something here, maybe that's not 100% mukhruch. But I think, I think even so, I think it's definitely true. I'm going to ask you a very personal question, okay? We know there's a concept of Yerida Sadaris, right? As the generations progress, so the Doris diminish, we get weaker and weaker. There are many Gemaras and Shas, and Rishonim, Kemalachim, Anuk, Neyadam, right? We're not even, la- our, our Kreisan, the Gemara says, are not even like the Tzipayran of the earlier generations, and many, many Gemaras. 
But if I were to ask you, and I've said this over a lot lately, who does Rivan Shalom love more? Our grandparents' generation, our parents' generation, our generation, the Rishonim, the Achroinim, who does Rivan Shalom love more? How are you supposed to know? Who knows? Who knows? I want to share with you comments of Rabbi Rucham Lovavitz in the Sefer Das Noira Parshishlach. He writes, you can have a yeshiva bachar today. The yeshiva bachar could be learning a toysmas, could be learning a rashba, could be learning a ritva, and he might not even fully understand the rashba and the ritva. But in Shamayim, the esteem that this bachar is held is even greater than the, ri- than the Rishon of whose words this Bachar is learning. Says Rabbi Rucham, we don't like to say it, we don't like to focus on it, but that's the truth. And I'm thinking that actually there's a Makar for this in the Arizal, in, uh, in one of his farm, he brings that Rab Chaim Vital would always ask the Ari, Rabbi, Rabbi, how come you always tell me that in Shamayim I'm more chasher than the earlier generations? I don't even come to the toenails of the earlier generations. And the Ari's said something very important. Says the Ari, the truth is the earlier generations were much greater than us. But in our times, in Tzvas, in the 16th century, the Koychois Hatuma are so out of control that in the Shamayim, you are more valued even than the earlier generations. So in the new editions of Rabbi Rucham, they point out, if you think Rabbi Rucham is saying a Chidosh, Makai Roy Tahar, there's already a source in the words of the Arizal. So I saw something amazing in the writings of Rav Shimon Shlav. We say every morning, Ahava Rabba Haftano Hashem Kingo. You stop a thousand people and you ask them, what do the words mean? Ahava Rabba Haftano. You can look in any English siddur, they usually translate it. With a great love, you have loved us, Hashem. Rav Schwab writes, that's not what the words mean. Ava Rabba doesn't mean with a great love you loved us. The word Rabba doesn't mean big, it doesn't mean great, it means increasing, expanding. That as much as HaKadosh Baruch Hu loved earlier generations, He loves our generation more and more. Hashem's love for us is growing, is expanding. Look, I look back to my time in Yeshiva, we had... We had Mamish Gibayrim in the time. We had great Bachram in the Yeshiva. I'm sure they're great Bachram today. But one thing for sure, one thing's for sure, the love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for Kla Yisrael, the love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for every single Jew, for every one of you, is more today, in 2023, than it was even in my time. Which means that every mitzvah you do is more valuable today than it once was. Which means every toysus you learn, every line of Gemara, every tefillah you offer, every hisgabras hayetzer today, you know, look, if the Arizal said in the 16th century, the koiches hatumah were out of control, what, would, what do you think he would say at our time? So really, we're living in historic times. Every yeshiva bachar today has to wake up in the morning and say to themselves, my avoidas Hashem today is more chashuv in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, maybe even than the earliest generation. Be'ez Hashem, I thank you very much for hosting me this morning. And maybe I'll even come back. They usually don't clap after I speak, so thank you very much. And it's really an honor to be here, to see uh, my Rabbeim, to see the Yeshiva, which you all, Rachel Atzlacha, Afrela from Kanaka. We're going to the bench right now, and then we'll move over to the You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.